Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. I really hope that you're getting good value out of this playlist around DBT. If you just came straight to this video and you haven't seen the other ones, then I'd recommend going way back and starting at the first DBT video and I'll put a pop-out banner at the top of the screen now so you can click on that and go back. In this particular video, we're continuing our journey using DBT and we're going to talk about testing in DBT and how that helps you as part of your software development lifecycle. Now, testing at scale is very difficult and that's mainly because a lot of the test teams I work with tend to have manual processes and manual steps as part of what they're doing and therefore it's very time consuming and complex to scale those processes to run it and cross the entire estate of all the items of data that you're working with. DBT aims to help facilitate that process and making testing at scale a lot easier. And it does this by allowing you to write SQL scripts to test your data within your models that you've built within the project in DBT. You can then build up these tests in development alongside writing and developing the code and using them as unit tests. And then you can plug those into production and get alerts crucially if any of those tests fail and you end up with a full regression test suite that you can run across your entire data environment. There's two main types of tests within DBT or groups of tests. The first one is singular tests. This is where you're writing a piece of SQL to test something that's very specific or very particular to a particular DBT model. An example of that, which we'll see in the demo, is looking at orders that have a negative or zero value associated with them. We want to be alerted and we want DBT to tell us if anything fails that particular row. That would be an example of a singular test. Second category or type of test DBT allows you to work with is called generic tests. And within that, there's four different types of tests. One is unique, so testing for unique values and not null. Test of any nulls in any field. Often those two are grouped together and applied to a primary key column, as you can imagine, that's quite useful. Another one is around available values. So this is where you list um, the expected values that any column can have within your DBT models. And finally, relationships. And that's where it can check different relationships within your models and throw an exception if anything fails. You can, of course, extend the out-of-the-box functionality of DBT by adding additional packages into it as well. And that help really helps you cater for other types of testing as well. Finally, you could even write your own custom code for very specific tests that you wanna run. To do that, you'll have to get into macros in Ginger within DBT, something that we haven't touched on yet and we're not gonna to touch upon in this video, but maybe in a subsequent one, we'll cover some of that as well. So in the meanwhile, without further ado, let's get into the demos and show you what the testing looks like in DBT. So one thing that we didn't cover in our previous video around sources was just tidying up our stage payment and changing that to point to our source that we've created. So the first thing that we need to do here is create a new file. We're going to create a new YAML file here and we're going to call it source stripe.yaml. If you remember, we did exactly the same with the source Jaffle Shop YAML file. And in here, we were able to specify some metadata relating to our source as well. So we're going to do a very similar thing now for our source Stripe. And to do that, I'm just going to copy and paste this bit from our source Jaffle Shop YAML file into our source Stripe YAML file just for speed and I'm going to call that stripe if you look at our stage payment table it's raw stripe payment so schema is also called stripe table called payment hit save on that and then we'll go into our stage payments and we're going to replace this with two curly braces the source function open brackets, stripe, and payment. And we're going to save that. Now we've got our source in green here. So that sets us up for the next lesson that we're going to run where we look into running tests against this as well. And we're going to create a test. So we go down to our tests folder here and we create a new file. 
and we're going to call it asset stage payments amount is positive dot equal and hit create. So the first thing that we need to do when writing the test is tell dbt what model it's associated with. So in this case, we're going to say with payments as, and we're going to refer to our stage payment model. And then we can write our SQL that's going to execute against the table to check for our test. Now, in this case, as the name suggests, we want to check to ensure that any orders that we pick up actually have a positive value associated with them. So we're going to run this query here, which is select order ID, sum of the amount, and we're going to alias that as the total amount, because we're going to use it in a second from the payments table, and group by order ID, and we're going to add a having clause in here with the total amount is less than zero. So if this returns any records, we want that to fail as a test, essentially. So let's click Save on there. So the way DBT works with tests is if this uh, SQL query in a test in DBT returns any values, then that means that the test has failed and it needs to either alert you or do something with it, depending on how you've configured it. So to run this test, we can come down to our command line here. We can have DBT test. And we can specify that we just want to run the uh, tests on stage payment model and hit return. And you can see our test has run now and passed. If we expand this out and have a look at the details, interestingly, we can see that dbt returns these count stars, which is generic across all tests in dbt. And it uh, lets dbt know what to do if uh, records come up. And down here, you can see we're checking our amount is total amount and uh, making sure we've got positive values only so interesting to see how that works and just useful to see if it does return any records that's how it generates warnings or errors depending on how you've configured it as well and in this case this is what we were referring to a little bit earlier when we talk about singular tests so tests that are written which are very specific to the data and table or objects that it refers to Next, we'll go on and have a look at generic tests and how we apply those. And that really allows you to test at scale across a number of your database objects very quickly and efficiently within dbt. OK, so now we're going to run our generic test. And we're going to do this in the chapel shop model. We're going to do it against a stage customer table. And to do that, we've just opened our source chapel shop YAML file that we created in the last video tutorial. If you haven't, went through that and you want to follow along, then I'll, I'll, then I'll put a link up in the banner above if you want to click that and go back in and follow along yourself. However, in here, just continue with adding the test in. We spec can specify models and we can provide the name of our model, which is in this case stage customer. We can then put columns, provide the name of our column which is customer ID in this case. And this is the primary key for our table here. We can then write tests and specify the generic built-in dbt tests that we would like to use. The first one is unique. The next one is not null. And we'll click save on that. Next, to run this particular test, we're just going to run dbt test with the S switch, the selector again, specifying stage customer. And we're going to execute that test. And there you can see that our two tests that we specified have run individually. If we expand them and look at the details, even though we specified it was a not null test, you can see that the actual where clause dbt is added is checking for nulls. And that's because the way dbt works is that if a test returns records, it means it's failed, as denoted by the cam stars at the top here. Let's just have a look at our unique test now. And we can see here that it's looking for a count of the records by custom ID, which is grouped by a custom ID as well, when a custom ID is not null, and where it's got a count star of greater than one. Again, looking for those exception records that are returned will fail the test. So let's keep going and add another test now. Let's look at our stage orders and let's execute that query and look at some of the data in here. 
Next, we want to run a particular test to check the status is definitely one of these particular status types. It's either return completed or return pending. Let's go back into our Shuffle shop YAML file now. Now in here, notice that we were able just to traverse down the hierarchy within the YAML file. So models, name, columns, then the name of the column, then the name of the test associated with that column. So it's quite hierarchical in that sense. So within the models heading, we can literally just copy this bit out and paste that in there. And this time we're going to specify orders. And we're going to change this to order ID. And we're going to keep the same tests on there that we want. And we're going to add to it. So this time now, we want to have a test on the status column as well, as we mentioned before. And then what we can specify here is tests. And then the kind of tests that we want to run. So in this case, it's an accepted values test. And it takes the parameter of values. And then beneath here, we can put our particular values we wanted to check for. So shipped, returned, completed, and return pending. Click save on that and then we'll run our dbt test for all staging orders. And you can see that we've had two of our tests pass and one fail. So let's work out what happened here. So in our accepted values, we can see this one's failed. If we look at our details, we can see the query that ran. So let's grab this query out, copy that, and we'll create a new query window. And we'll paste the code in here. We'll just get rid of this top line here, and we'll execute this. And we'll see what we get back. Now we're expecting some records to come back and there we go. We've got a status of place that's appearing in there, 13 rows against it, which we didn't expect to see there. So that's our issue. So let's assume that we've just made a mistake here and placed as a valid status that we expected to see in there. And we just missed our, off our expected values. And so in our source shuffle shop YAML file, we will add in placed and click save as our expected values. So this time we'll run our tests again and this time we expect to see three tests run and them all pass successfully, which they do. So we've looked at now generic tests and singular tests based upon the SQL in our models to make sure the SQL is returned in the data as we anticipate and we're not going to potentially load data that's going to cause problems into our downstream environment. However, we can also then apply these tests against our sources as well. So let me show you how to do that. So we'll go in the source shuffle shop YAML file. We'll scroll to our sources block here. And under our customers table that we've already populated in our previous video on sources, we're going to add name, ID, and we're going to add our tests. unique and not null tests into that source and we'll click save on that to test these actual individual tests against our sources i'm going to go into dbt test and i'm going to add in here select source and jaffle shop And I'm going to run that test. But notice it's giving me a compilation error again. This is where you've got to be careful. One thing I've missed out here, it's really easy to miss these things sometimes, is I need to add columns in here like that because I'm now specifying the column name, not the table name, which is how dbt was reading it. So if I click save now, it will compile the code for me again, and it will tell me now it's ready to go. So now we're going to run my test again. I think it's always handy to point out those errors when I come across them as well, because it might help you troubleshoot your own code, especially if you're new to dbt 
and that's who these videos are really aimed at people just getting up to speed on dbt understanding what it does and how to do it so you can see these uh, tests have now run and both of them have passed again we can take a look at uh, the fact that it's run against our sources as well our raw data so there you go hopefully you found that useful we covered testing what benefits dbt brings we've covered what generic tests are singular tests and finally how to test sources hope you found that useful if you did please like and subscribe new videos coming soon